Hello, I am Diego Lisseras, and today I'm going to create another small video around uh, a question that came to my YouTube channel. So here you have the link for my YouTube channel, and you can also check my blog, my uh, Twitter, my Twitch channel, of course, if you're here. And you can download some of my game templates from this display. So um, I'm just going to go back here. And basically, the question that I had uh, was around global uh, variables and instance variables. So uh, I've tried to explain this in many different ways, but usually the best way to do it is with an example. So I created this small video, this small video game, just to to illustrate, to help me illustrate what what I'm talking about. So let's check it really quick. It is nothing complicated. This is going to have three little like characters here that are, that are moving right now, and all of them are moving at the same time because well I haven't really changed it like that. And you're also are going to have like these dangers that I haven't been doing anything like these dangerous uh, squares, red squares, and you have these other ones that are green that supposedly are like, nom noms that are like things that you have to pick. They could be coins, they could be treasures, whatever you want. So. Uh, I'm going to first add a global variable and see how that works and then I'm going to add an instance variable and you're going to see a little bit the difference between the two of them okay so the global variable that I'm going to add so I already added a little bit of, uh, of code here like well events and right now the only thing that I'm doing is just to pick uh, the nom noms the little coins that we have there and just destroy them whenever they touch one of the little players that we have here the little happy faces that we have here now uh, the variable the, the variable that I'm going to add is going to be um, one that I'm going to call noms picked so this one is going to have to be a number uh, that is going to just be zero, starting at zero, and we're going to have it here. And at the same time, is going to account all the num nums that are, we're going to to pick here, all the green squares that we're going to pick here, regardless of who's going to pick them. So if the blue face picks one, that counts. If the yellow one picks one, another green square, then it also counts. So that's the thing that I'm going to do here. Now in this event, whenever it doesn't really matter who, which one of the players is picking that nom nom. I am just going to add one to my global variable that are noms picked. That's it. And the other thing that I'm going to do is since I already have a label that is called pick label, I'm going to update that. So pick label, set text to noms picked and here I'm going to add uh, noms picked. That is the variable that is the global variable that is going doing that. So let's change. Let's see that. And I'm going to let's use the blue one. That's the big one. There is one. And now with the gray, that's two. Now let's give one to the yellow one. Has the big one. There you go. So this variable is just could be something that you could do uh, use for lives for levels, something that you need in the entire game. Now, uh, let's suppose that I also want to know the specific number that we have uh, picked which the blue with the blue or with the yellow or with the gray. So for that, I, c I would need three different variables. I would need to count how many this one has picked, how many this one has picked, how many this one has picked. If we are going to do with variables, global variables, I would have to declare all of them. So uh, that would be a little bit of a problem if I had a thousand different players. And there could be a game that, that we could, I don't know, somehow keep track of that. But what I'm going to do is to use the instance variable. So I just click on the player, I go to the property side, and I'm going to add an instance variable. And then here I'm going to say uh, picked. That's it. That's the variable that we have, and it starts at zero. So that's good. So now not only I'm going to add to the global number, the global count that I have, but I'm also going to say that I'm going to add 
to the uh, specific player that is touching. So that means that I'm going to add to pick. That's one. And that works. So now let's try it. So now the blue one, well, or the gray one is closer. So I already picked one. I used, and I'm going to show you, a small label here that is called pick text. And right now I added another event that is saying that whenever I hover one of the players is going to show me how many how m uh, well right now it's not doing it so uh, so let's do that <laughs> this would be player dot picked so this is the uh, instance variable that's how you call it so now what I'm going to do is again run it I'm picked I pick one as a whole and the gray one pick one well it's upside down but it's just because of the there as a whole but the yellow one has zero and the blue one has zero because these ones have not picked anyone so let's just keep picking first with the yellow now this one should have a one zero zero one and then two one one so you see that each one of them has a different value Okay, so there you go. Now, three, well, let me put them in better orientation. Three, two, one, two. So, they have different values, each one of them. So, this is important, uh, especially for lives. When you're, for example, doing something like this. What about if I give another life? Um... I'm just going to say lives and I'm going to start with two okay and then since we already have some moving elements these little red squares here those are dangerous so I'm just going to say whenever the player collides with one of those sprites that I'm going to call it I don't know danger I'm going to decrease the life of that player. Not all the lives, because each one of the players has a different amount of lives. So I'm going to subtract from lives, I'm going to subtract one. And now what I'm going to ask to you is that when a player uh, compare instance variables, when his lives are less or equal than zero, I'm going to destroy the player. So right now, nothing's happening. I'm going to move the... Oh, well, I touch it. Okay, twice. So let me see. Here. So gray, let's touch one, touch twice. And you see that both of them were destroyed at a different points. So uh, let me see. Going to touch me once, I lose one life, I can move around, blah 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 and also second time. So what that means is that each one of the players had two lives when we started. But afterwards, you see this one is destroyed, each one of them keeps a different number. Right now this should have two, this one should have two, and then if I get touch here, well I get touched twice, but the yellow one is still had two. And now the second touch is going to to disappear. So this is important. And the entire thing is that you see that with a global variable I basically have only one number, only one value that I can store there. With the player uh, and the instance variables that we have here, each one of the instances, each one of the copies of the players that we have, each one has an, a picked val uh, variable and a lives variable. And they can be completely different from this. So this one could have picked three green squares and has, it could have like, I don't know, could have like one life. This one could be uh, two picked and two lives. And this somehow, let's say that we have a power up and uh, recovers many more lives. So it could have like 20 lives and only one picked. So they have different values. The other important part 
this is going to be a quick trick that I'm going to do here is going to be around uh, uh, layouts layouts by default you have just one right but you can create another one so I'm going to duplicate this one and it's going to be layout too and I'm going to open it so it starts basically the same just to make it look a little bit different I'm going to change things here I'm going to move the position of the players I'm going to put them all at the bottom so it's different and also uh, since these elements are bouncing here if we try it it should look different you see and I don't know if you want another I'm going to put a background but I'm going to change actually the background of this one so they look different uh, I'm going to make it look I don't know yellow is that okay Oof, that's kind of like a strong yellow something like this so you have the first level that is white and it has these elements the second one that I just modified and it has some yellow so which one is the, the important part here um, so collision where are my nums picked okay here uh, I am just going to say I'm going to add one at the start just to make certain that I'm not lying to you and it's going to be this one so I'm kind of like updating the number of uh, squares that we have picked and the thing is that both layouts have the same event sheet so they have exactly the same logic so on the first layout what I'm going to add is another element uh, a button I'm going to put it here and I'm going to say level 2 and I'm going to add that whenever I click that button I go to the level 2 right I'll click go to layout layout 2 so you're going to see something interesting and is I'm going to start on layout 1 first level that the global variables they are kept in the entire game regardless of where you are so for example I'm going to try to pick some green squares here I'm going to pick two only two right so it says two now if I go to the second level it's still saying two and then three four so just to make it more like so do you believe me I am going to add another one that is to return to level one another button here so it's going to be button two and I'm going to copy this condition here and but instead of button click it's going to be button two click and instead of going to layout one I'm going to to layout two I'm going to go to layout one so basically I have two buttons two different ones in the two levels and I'm going to go out or layouts I'm using them as levels and I'm going to go back and forward between the two of them so uh, here I have one two go to the second level I am on one two then three four and then here I'm still at four then I'm, it just keeps counting up five six and whatever so the global variables are kept during the entire game regardless of which layout you are in but the instance variables are not so for example if here the gray um, the great happy face is destroyed and I go to the second level he's still here and his lives are still too so I have to be hit twice before I get destroyed here and now I'm going to destroy the yellow one but if I go back to the original level both of them are there because their instance variables the lives that they have here in this level it's still two I still haven't uh, deleted them but if you have been keeping count of the global variables for the number of picked ones it just keeps going up because I'm collecting in between the levels and I'm just using only one global variable for that so all in all global variables are variables that remain during the entire game 
You can use them for things like lives, the uh, level that are picked. You also can use it as a flag uh, uh, when you're going to pause the game, so you can keep it like pause during the entire game. You also can keep it, you can use a global variable, let's say, to keep information that uh, needs to be used in between the main menu and the, uh, the a particular level or things like that. The instance variables, those are when, especially when you have several copies of one element, in this case I didn't have one player, I had three players, and each one of them needs to have a different value for, in this case, picked or lives. So um, let's suppose that you're going to create a tower defense game and you want every enemy to die at a different point because because each one has let's say different lives it has different speed it has different characteristics they have like I don't know kind of, of enemies then you could do use all these instance variables for that so at some point I use I created the video that is for uh, to create a trick it was a little trick to instead of using global variables that are going to count on your number of events just use a variable container and put all that as instance variables that only works if the variables that you put here are needed only on your layout if you're going to go move between levels like in this case I was using layout 1 and layout 2 you do need global variables because the instance variables are not going to uh, be stored between layouts. So I hope that that explanation uh, helped a little bit. Uh, quite likely you can see many of these things in different tutorials and also in, in some of the uh, well in the documentation directly from for Construct 2, the official documentation. But uh, I thought that it was kinda cool to do a small video that may help you understand these concepts. So uh, I hope that you had a great day and um, please check my YouTube channel, uh, send me questions and comments, they are always welcome. Thank you.